Okay, so what I got here is a series of different zeros that we shot. Now, here's what I did as a disclaimer. Um, yesterday, we actually set up a Precision, an M4 with a scope on it, um, and shot as accurately as we could. We had perfect wind conditions. It was a perfect sunny day. So this is what we got out of it. This is our best results out of the whole templates we shot. But I wanted to give you a visual so, and show you exactly what your ballistics are actually doing with each different zero that you choose. Because the controversies out there are, well, you're shooting 100 yards zero, you should be shooting a 25 yard zero, you should be shooting a 300 yard Marine Corps zero, you should be using an Army zero, you should be using a this or that. So let's show it. Let's talk about what is the best for you. Okay. Now, of course, you have military and police, uh, you know, SOPs that you have to go by. That's fine. But as a thinker first, no matter what you have to do in your SOPs, you need to understand what your bullet's doing. The bullet never lies. Remember that. This is a 25 yard zero. Okay. 25. 25 is pretty interesting because of the fact that I, I look at things, I break it down into two categories to make it simple for you. Combat effective zone and then holdovers. Two things. So what is my combat effective zone? Can I put my red dot right here on my zero and shoot a combat effective zone without moving that dot? So if I move out to 50, there's my impact. If I move out to 75, 100, 200, 300, and then you can see I start working back down to 400. Just by holding this dot here every single shot at each one of those yard lines, I get about a 15 or inch combat effective zone. Is that effective in combat? Absolutely. So out to 400 with a 25 yard zero, I can actually have this zone. Now 500 is at the knees. Okay, so remember that's the one holdover you have to remember. Combat effective zone, 15 inches. Hey, put the dot on the chest, squeeze the trigger. The knees, that's 500. So if you got to shoot to 500, just move that length of the body up, put the dot up here, and fire. And you should hit the combat effective zone again. So that's what's great about the 25. The bad thing about it is, is when you're zeroing at 25, it's really easy to get a nice tight group. So your error, the human error inputted into the fundamentals there with that small cone of deviation can be deceiving. So keeping that in mind, if you choose to use this zero because you like what you see again, make sure you can confirm at these ranges. If you want to see where you're hitting at 400, well, go out and shoot the template that I shot. I'm happy with this. So as long as my fundamentals are correct, hey, I could use a 25 yard zero. It just depends on your particular application. Just keep in mind that your combat effective zone is a little bit higher, okay? So if you're inside of 200 and 300, you're gonna be hitting the neck. It's not a whole lot of body, okay? So just keep in mind that. If you, if you don't like that high zone, well, let's take a look at some of the others. All right, so let's go over to the 50 yard now. 50 yard zero, it's okay, not bad, but let's take a look at it. So I've got, my zero is the red. That's where I shot the 50 yard bullet. 100, about an inch high, 200, right back down into the zero point. 300, now I start dropping down. 400, I struck right underneath. It actually cracked the plastic here. So that's not a bad effective zone. I've got a nine inch combat effective zone out to 300 yards. You can't ask for better than that. If I wanna use that 400, I'm running 24 inch effective zone down here that's still a combat effective hit if i hit this guy in the midline in his waist he's going down it's going to put a hurting on him or it's going to at least take four other guys to carry him somewhere so it's still what we consider a combat effective hit but it still is also considered a holdover if you want a precision shot with that so remember 24 inch cut that a half 12 just hold the face and you'll hit him right in the chest down on the 500 for this holdover you're hitting in the feet or ankles so just remember that, that distance, cut it in half, and you'll be inside your combat effective zone. So again, to recap on the 50, great combat effective zone at the 300. You can still keep that 400, it's just barely in there. 500's at the ankles for the holdover, okay? Let's go to the 100. 100 yard zero. So looking at this first bullet that I fired at 100, at the zero, right, right in there. Now, if I was inside close quarters distances, point blank to 25 to 50 moving out to 100 I know that I'm always constantly holding over okay so you, it's kind of an easy zero that's why a lot of people like it because you're constantly having to aim up for the farther out you go there's no up or down like there is on some of these other targets because like if you notice back here on some of these the 25 you're starting to go up but at a certain point you start to come back down well where is that point can you memorize that great if you're not a person that can memorize it then go with something more simple if you think you're smart 
and you know you're smart under stress and you can remember it, that's a whole different story because I know some of the smartest people that can't remember anything under stress. So that's why we kind of keep these simple. And I like the, the way the human brain thinks. I just keep holding up. So again, 25, 50 in close quarters, 100 yards, zero, 200, 300 starts dropping down, 400 is about the knees, 500 is at the feet. So now I really have two real holdovers, okay? I've got the 300, which is still a combat effective hit, but what's great, I got a four inch combat effective zone out to 200, 16 out to 300, and then 400 is a holdover, 500 is a holdover. So that's how I break down the 100 yard zero, okay? Let's go over here to the 200 yard zero. Now 200 is pretty interesting. What we got is the zero, 200 yards. Now I shot it in closer distances because typically we find ourselves shooting more and closer, but if we have to work out, then we're passing that zero mark and going on to four, five, 600 if you have to. So what I did is I added 25, a 50, and 100. Well, what happens is they start to work up and then back down, which is kind of interesting because you have a 2.5 inch, and I confirmed this with a ballistic calculator as well, combat effect is on to 200, okay? If you want to add the 300 in there, notice how much higher it is than from these other targets. So now, let's add that 300 shot in there. We have a 10 inch combat effective zone out to 300. That's pretty good. 400 is down at the knees, 500 is down at the ankles again. So it dramatically starts dropping at that point. So again, good combat effective zone out to 300. Two holdovers, pretty easy. Let's move over here to the 300 yard zero. This is typically what the Marine Corps uses. This is what I use for a long time. We kind of started at 36 yards. Okay, we have a 36 yard sheet that we'll shoot at to confirm that our, our battle site zero is on the paper. And then we'll actually get a chance to go out and actually confirm it at all the ranges, which is the good thing about this range. So I shot my 300 yard zero right here. Then I, of course I worked in these CQB distances to see what would happen. So 2,500 and 200, it starts to climb a little bit. But out to 300, from CQB to 300, I have a five inch combat effective zone. And that's why we like using this, out to 300. My battle site zero is right there. I pretty much have a good hold. I can put that dot anywhere in the chest. I'm going to get in a combat effective hit somehow, some way. 400, down in the gut. You add that together, it's about uh, 14 inches more, uh, or I should say 14 inches total of a combat effective zone, including the 400 mark. 500 is at the knees. So I find personally, the 36 yard confirmed with actual confirmation at 300 to make sure it's hitting at 300 is a very, very good zero. I personally use it. So the point in why I set these templates up is so you can actually see all your combat effective zones and see what the different ballistics are with just different zeros. Same gun, same ammo. So the point is choose the zero that works the best for you in your lifestyle of shooting. Whether you're a military law enforcement, a competitor, you have lots of options here.